For 25 years now, DNA sequencing has been moving ahead at a pace that has exceeded the pace of really any other technology that we have. Since the human genome appeared in 2001, sequencing technology has actually gotten something like 500,000 times faster and cheaper than even it was then. And that's required a lot of very clever advances in computational methods in order to keep up with all this data and make sense of all this data. DNA sequencing technology, despite all the advances, still only reads DNA in small chunks, but they can't read a whole chromosome from end to end. We've designed computer programs we call assemblers to assemble these raw reads together to reconstruct the genome. We design the assemblers and we also run them to put together genomes of all sorts of things, ranging from viruses and bacteria, which have very small genomes, to plants and animals, which have very large genomes. This year, we're working on two of the largest genomes ever sequenced that also happen to be two of the largest organisms, the giant sequoia and the coast redwood tree genomes. The data is changing and the data sets are getting ever bigger and the speed at which DNA sequencing is getting more efficient, higher throughput, has been outpacing the speed at which computers have been getting faster for 15 years now. We've really been designing algorithms and then implementing them in software that are much more efficient and 10 times faster or 50 times faster or even 100 times faster than the state of the art. And that's made a big difference in the kind of analyses people can do. Pretty much in everything we do, we're pushing the field ahead and we're trying to be leaders. And, and I think it's fair to say that, that many people in the computational biology community kind of look to us for that kind of leadership. Our most translational project by far is our work trying to use sequencing to diagnose infections. When you go to your doctor with a sore throat, you should cough into a piece of filter paper and we should sequence that and then tell you what you have. What Dream at Hopkins was the chance to be also part of the medical school and this world-class medical institution, which is certainly one of the best in the world. I'm working with people in the pathology department uh, and a couple other infectious disease groups to try to actually show that we can take the technology, put all the pieces together and go from a patient sample to a diagnosis. So that's what's distinctive about Hopkins for my work because I'm bridging uh, engineering and medicine. And it's important for me to have medical researchers who I can work with who are uh, at the top of the field.